I welcome everyone to finding yourself again, pursuing personal professional goals as a caregiver. Let me make sure I get my, there we go, pin myself here so you could still see me. All right, I think we're good to go. So the, uh, before we get started into the content, I'm gonna briefly share a little bit about the two projects we have here. Some of you are aware of those, some of you, this might be new information, but you will get a copy of the PowerPoint. So you'll be able to read through all of, you know, all of what's here. So I'm gonna briefly just kind of uh, go through this. Um, Vision for Equality has many, many programs that we do here to support families and support people with disabilities. And the two projects that I am, um, um, in uh, that I provide oversight uh, for the two projects that I lead here of uh, Vision for Equality are the System Navigation and the Pro uh, Trauma Informed Care Project. With System Navigation, we pair caregivers with another caregiver, someone who has lived experience, you know, kind of going through the systems of care that we have, whether it's, you know, with IDD, you know, uh, developmental disability, autism. And even physical health, like all the things that we need, you know, our loved one and ourselves need in order to be well and thrive in life. And sometimes it can be hard to navigate through. Who do I call? Where do I call? Sometimes you call, you don't hear back. So the system navigation team comes alongside you to walk with you on this journey to make sure that you have the resources the, that you need, that you and your family need in order to have an everyday life. And as a result, you know, of having that support or hopes that family will feel less isolated, more connected, obviously, and supported throughout the journey, uh, life, you no know, lifespan. So there's no age limits, you no know, anybody, uh, any family who has someone with a developmental disability can be a uh, part of the project. And um, the trauma informed care project is also gonna serve the same population. And it focuses more on providing training and counseling and resources around the mental health or mental well-being if you want of caregivers because often we care for everybody else and then we are, we are the last one on our own to-do list sometimes we don't even make it to the to-do list right and so with the trauma-informed care project we're able, we're able to provide that kind of training so actually this training we're doing today is one of the initiative if you want of the trauma-informed care project um, so every month we offer one, tra one training around different stressors that caregivers experience. And as we, you know, as we discuss those, then we also then work through the same challenges in a support group that meet also three times a month. And when families need support, you know, beyond that, we can connect them with mental health providers in the community to make sure, again, that everyone has the resources to reduce stress and be well. And so there's two projects that I mentioned. Um, are currently supporting families, especially who live in Philadelphia. But if you need anything, as we often say here, just reach out to us, you know, there's so many projects, so many programs we have here at Vision for Quality. We'll make sure, sure that you're connected and get the resource you need some way, somehow. So I'm sure Allegra, some of you already know me. Um, like I mentioned, I oversee those two projects and I'm glad to be back, you know, at Vision for Quality doing, you know, this work and been part of the, disability field if you want for a little over a decade. My, actually, my middle child just celebrated his 11th birthday on the 9th of January. And um, he, I was pregnant with him when I first entered you know, this world. And as much as it's been challenging, it's also been so, so rewarding to be able to get the support that we need, but also be able to give back in this way and more. So our agenda for today, we're gonna look at the impact of caregiving on personal and professional life barriers to pursuing personal goals, the, you know, look at some tools to help you with goal setting, kind of pursue your own goals as a caregiver. And then we'll look at ways to maintain our individuality while caregiving. And you'll see kind of how all those flow together. Like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. I'm actually gonna be asking some questions to encourage all of us to participate. Uh, Cause this is a learning, we, we, love, we love creating learning communities. So it's not just about me presenting, it's about all of us sharing together so that we can all learn. And honestly, when people share, you know, every time, every training we have, every support group, I always take something back as well. So let's go straight to our first point here. And I'll start with my questions, right? And I encourage you, if you're able to use the chat, do so if you need support. Um, if you're with a family member, ask for support. If it's something I can help with, please let me know. So we can allow you to participate as well. 
But I want you to think about this question. How much has caregiving impacted your personal and or professional life? You can put an A for a lot, B for somewhat, C not so much, D for very little. Let me open the chat here. Yeah, I see some A's already. Yeah, and I have to see them for myself, like I've been through kind of, it's, you know, it's never the same all the time. So there are seasons where it was like definitely A and then it's maybe I'm a B or C and then something like, oh, right now maybe it's a D, we kind of have a groove and then something else will happen that actually, you know, will change that answer. So no matter where you are, this C is not to say, oh my goodness, you know, this is bad. This also just to bring awareness that one, you're not alone. Right, that all of us as caregivers, because we love a loved one and we do put in so much energy and time, and rightfully so, you know, there's no shame in that, but it also impacts the other areas of our life. So, this is just to bring awareness like, oh, I'm doing this great work being the caregiver that I am to my loved one, but also, am I forgetting about myself? Or how can I find ways to also put myself on my to do list? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing there. So, as you can see, you know, like I said, we we all been impacted. Um, even those of us who did not share, they like I seen for myself too. It kind of I can so many times I can tell you, oh, today's an A, you no, know, tomorrow might be a B, and you just never know, right? Because life is fluid, things keep changing, as you all know. So here's some research. Um, those of you who've been to a training you know that I I love providing some kind of research into the trainings that we do just to kind of put it in more into perspective. So one, we're not alone. You see others you know, who are sharing in the chat of us that we know who are going for the same things, but there's also now data to prove that this actually happens. You know, outside of Philly, outside of PA, this actually happened. So in 2015, the National Alliance for Caregiving and NRP did this, um, this research about caregiving in the US that's been collecting some data. And here's what they found of the people that they um, surveyed, 61% of caregivers experienced some kind of change in their career from their employment due to caregiving. Sometimes it's cutting hours, sometimes it's taking leave of absence, sometimes it's receiving warnings because we can't do it all, where it's attendance or performance stuff, right? It's impact us. And I would know you have this PowerPoint, but I just want you to look at some of the statistics, right? 49% arrived to their place of work late or leave early. I need to take time off. I've done it many times and I'm grateful, you know, to be in a position like this where we have the flexibility, we understand, you know, what, you know fam we support family, understand the challenges and provide flexibility, but it's a challenge because you just never know when you have to run to the hospital, when you have an over um, therapy session sometime, you know, coordinate everything around there and it makes it hard for you to do maybe the things you did before all these changes happen for you and your loved one. Right. The list goes on, you know, from from absences to reducing hours to, you know, turning down promotion. Sometimes people are very capable in, in their job and they can do more, but it's like, I can't take more right now, right? Because I really, home is already taking a lot for me. I can't add more possibility at, at work on top of that. And then when it comes to relationship, we're actually doing uh, family dynamics training. So that is my shameless plug. So that's why I didn't put too much here on, on the relationship because we're doing two trainings uh, in February and March around, around the relationship, family dynamics when it comes to caregiving. The one in February will be focusing on parents, how you know parents or adults know how caregiving impacts the you know, relationship between adults when, um, when just when we're caregiving, when things are going on around those lines. And then in March, we'll be doing one for siblings. You know how siblings' dynamics are impacted uh, when we when we have a loved one with a disability in the home. So, for this one, again, three quarters of adults think for other parents. So this is mostly for people who are dealing, you no, know, or taking care of over adults. But they report the strains in their relationships, and some say forty six percent of them say kind of damage the romantic relationship. Twenty five percent actually play a role in the divorce. It's hard. And again, I'm not, you know, we're not going to go too much into this. We're providing more, you know, support around those things. But I'll just know that this is why at Vision we have these, you know, we have the trauma-informed care project and other resources to support families 
effective if so that you're not carrying that burden alone, not just in relationships per se, but it's helping you with the caregiving um, duties, like finding support for you and your loved one so that you can have a meaningful life as well as a caregiver, so that you have the time, the space, you know, and sometimes time it's even a touchy subject, right? But it, you know, we, we do what we can to help alleviate some of that stress for you. And so when you don't feel alone, you know, you're not doing this by yourself. With the system navigation project I mentioned earlier, we help, we've helped families work through transportation issues, um, staffing issues, uh, getting services through the county, get services through insurance, you name it. Um, so that's one thing, again, that you don't have to do by yourself. And if we can reduce that stress and you can maybe enjoy home a little more, enjoy your family a little more, have more time to just be and relax and breathe instead of, like we all know, being on the phone all day long, right? Trying to coordinate everything. But there's more impacts, right? There's um, lots of hobbies, there's lots of friendships. And I know that loneliness is one of the big, 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 big thing for all of us caregivers. Um, sometimes we have, we had friends before we became a caregiver, we could do much more with them, but then we now have, you know, all these other things we need to do and, and we don't have time to invest in those you know, friendships anymore. Um, loss of space. When you think about it, you know, for many of us, our loved one might have all this different equipment, just space, even just physical space, right? Before you had a big enough house until, you know, you needed more space for the wheelchair, you need more space for the hospital bed, you need more space for all the over equipment. And then you were like, oh yeah, this, it, it might not, at first we don't think how much that impacts us, but that's a big change in our routine. It's a big change in our, just an environment that we have to adjust to. And we do it well as caregivers, it's like this is part of our life, but it does also impact us emotionally because it's an adjustment. Um, but speaking of loss of privacy, this one is a huge one as well. Think about all the people that come to our houses now, right? The physical therapist, the occupational therapist, the behavioral therapist, you know, the social worker, the support coordinator. It's like everybody knows your address. Everybody pops in, but you know, according to whatever schedule is set and whatever you know, program is coming. But, uh, <coughs> Sorry about that. So I just, so you know, I'm just muting everybody so we can have better quality for the audio. And um, since we'll be sharing that with others later, but again, if you have a questions, please you know, feel free to, you know, to ask to speak and unmute yourself at that time or use the chat. All right. So before we go into the next slide, I just wanted to read this um, graphic that I found online. It says, only a, another caregiver understand that going to the grocery store is like a mini vacation, right? If how many of us don't even get that five minutes just to go to the bathroom, right? And so those little things are things that we lose, right? So that's the, the space, the privacy, the time for, you know, for just routine stuff, you no know, mundane things even. Um, but when, when you say like, I'm wanting on empty, it's not like everybody's wanting on empty. Like, you know, it takes a whole different meaning when you are, you know, you're caregiving. But also the power up of emotions that go, that happens internally. You know, sometimes we talked about last one we, on Tuesday when we did the first training. So the exact same training that we offer three times during the month. So our first time was on Tuesday. We kind of had a discussion about these, like sometimes as caregivers, we love the love, we love our loved one. We, you know, we want to be there, we are there. And then emotionally, it's when we don't invest in ourselves and or try to pursue our own hobbies and things that are also important to us, it can create this resentment, not towards the loved one necessarily, just towards the situation. Like nobody signed up for this. I that like, this is the reality we live in. And you know, you like, oh, it creates a lot of frustration, that frustration built up into the resentment, but also the love that we have for our loved one. That's why we do this. That's why we're all here, right? Um, but the fear, the anxiety, the loudness, like a lot of emotions powered up there. And that's why, again, we have that support group, like I mentioned um, earlier. It's a support group that we have. Yes, we talk about challenges around caregiving, like getting resources and such, but our main focus is to make sure that you are being taken care of emotionally, that your mental health is a priority. And so things like those emotions, we mentioned the, the anxiety, the fear, the loneliness, we you know openly discuss those things and we provide some resources and tips and um, support for you to practice at home in between us, you know, between our meetings, but also just right there in the moment. We actually have, always have a meditation to close our uh, support group. 
and that's been really helpful even for myself. So I look forward to our meetings as well. All righty. So let's look at some of those barriers. You know, so we know caregivers impact, caregiving impact us you know, in different ways. And then, so what are those barriers then that you know, related to caregiving that make it hard for us to pursue, achieve those personal goals? And I'm back to you again. What barriers have you experienced when setting or pursuing personal goals as a caregiver? And you're welcome to unmute and share, or you can use the chat as well. I'll be sharing some, but I want to give you a chance to share first before I kind of reveal the next slide with some of uh, the things that I came up with. And Karen shared, an over impact on family members and the caregiving is sometimes the way the one being careful speaks to or treats family members, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's related to their challenges. You know, I know in my own house, you know, we have one loved one, loved one who I, he's, Friendly and nice when all's going well. When he's having a challenging day, sometimes, you know, he can act a little mean, you know, and we tell him that. It's like, you know, we love you, want to support you, but right now you're being mean and that hurts us. You know, so back again to what I said about the family dynamics that we'll be talking about in February and March. So, you know, feel, definitely, you know, stay tuned to uh, those dates. If you got an email for this and you're already on an email list, you know, you'll definitely be getting that. But if you, did not get the email for this training directly and maybe someone share it to you, uh, feel free to send me a private, you know, through the chat, you can send me your email privately and I'll make sure that I add you to a list. So you have the dates for those upcoming trainings. Okay, so can't you mention time, spending time on the phone? Yes, that has often been a big barrier as I felt I was neglecting my other children when trying to obtain services for my mother-in-law or my child with a disability. Yeah, those, those are real challenges. It's like, you know, there's only so many hours a day, right? It's like, when I give it here, I can't get it back to put it in a little bucket of whatever I need, it, I need it for. And sometimes I feel like when I'm doing one thing for some one loved one, the other one kind of have to take the back burner because we can't do it all. And they're definitely not, you know, we can't do it all, do it all, all the time, but definitely not at the same time. All right, so let's look at some of the things that I came up with. Lack of time, like we were just sharing here, you know, a few seconds ago. Um, caregiving is time consuming. We all know that, right? But also lack of energy. After we've taken care of everybody else, at the end of the day, I don't have time to think about if I like to crochet or listen to music or take a bubble bath. I just don't have the energy. You know, the fun might come, like, it would be nice to actually do something for me, but I don't have the energy to do it at that point. And I was joking on Tuesday how sometimes my kids actually, I go fall asleep before they do because I'm so worn out at the end of the day. Like, I, you know, wish I could bottle up their, you know, energy and actually take as a supplement <laughs> because it can go, 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 like energize a bunny. And then I'm like, I'm ready to crash. Like, the day's over for me. Right. But also lack of support, like we talked about earlier. There's so much that comes with caregiving. And when we don't have support for that, you know, the caregiving part of it, it drains our time and energy, but then there's nobody supporting us. Again, this is where we have this, you know, training, this is where we have the support group, so we have all those services that we have here at Vision. Um, but decreased finances, you know, caring for loved one with disability is costly. Yes, there are, you know, things that we have that we're eligible for, like, you know, whether it's coverage for medical, you know, medical assistance and, and different services you know, that we receive. But beyond that, just think about all the other things that where money goes that you didn't plan for. You know, in our own house, I, I, we have one loved one who has a lot of food allergies. So as much as, yes, he has medical coverage to take care of the appointments to all the specialists we have to see. But when it comes to food budget, his budget alone, you know, he's one four for a family size, right? It's one person in a family of four but his budget for what he eats takes more than half of a grocery bill. That's a financial, you know, that's a financial need there. And even just driving back and forth to all the appointments. Yes, there is the, you know, if you have MA, you can get, um, you can get transportation reimbursement, but it's not that much. If you think about it compared to all the miles that we put in our cars, it helps. It's, you know, definitely if you qualify for that, you know, you know go for it. We can help you, you know, apply for those 
uh, services, those, so that support, but it still does leave, you know, gaps, right, into everything. Um, sometimes you think about, like, you know, how we are very sensory seeking. So we're buying all these fidget tools that toys and that disappear in a day or two because they get chewed off, broken. So it's like, you know, but, but if we don't have the fidget toy, nobody's happy. So it's like it gets broken. We have to invest more money in getting more of them. And then also misunderstanding by others. So sometimes people don't understand what we're going for as a caregiver. And sometimes they don't understand that even as caregivers, we still want a full or bigger life for ourselves as well. While we're caregiving, we're taking care of a loved one. You know, it shouldn't be an either or, it should be an end. You know, I can take care of my loved one and also take care of myself. But often that reality is not feasible for many. So we need support, right? So we have, again, we have the support. We try to boost support on one caregiver so that we can still looking at that. You are people who understand what you're going through, who been there, um, so nobody's judging you. And the last thing here of speaking of judgment, you know, caregiver guilt is a huge barrier. I think Karen mentioned that it's like, you feel like you're neglecting your loved one because you're doing something for yourself. And sometimes it's not a neglect thing. I think we'll, you know, we talked about this on Tuesday is how you see and, and maybe trying to reframe that. So if your loved one is safe, if your loved one is taken care of, you know, maybe because somebody else is taking care of them, whether it's a paid staff or a family member, if they're taken care of and you are taking that five minutes, even just to maybe listen to your favorite music or drink your cup of coffee, just to remind yourself that you matter, that is not a bad thing. That's actually a very good thing. Because the more you pour into yourself, the more you can pour into your loved one. But also, the more you start, you know, you start pursuing your, your goals, the fuller life you have, the more energy actually fuels you to be more present with your loved one. I love, I love the work that I do. And I know when I'm not working as much, I love my kids. I still feel like something is missing. I have, because there's something else I'm passionate about. But when I can find the way to make both work, I'm like, oh yeah, they, I, you know, I feel more like my like things are how they need to be. Not perfect, you know. Some days are hard. You know, nothing is easy per se, but it kind of brings a fuller picture, right? So maybe when we we also had a training on caregiver guilt last month on, in December, and I'll I'll have the link for that in the resources section. So when you get this PowerPoint, there will be a link to. Um, the training about caregiver guilt. So you can have all the tips there about how to deal with that. And again, come to support group, you know, if you need a safe place to process as well. Any questions before I move into this next uh, section of the presentation? Make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. Okay. Any questions? Are you still with me? Does this resonate with you? You can give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat or feel free to mute if you want to. I'm here. <laughs> no, I, I wanna say like sometimes the like you express the lot of time. Mm -hmm. You wanna do a lot of stuff, but sometimes you you try, but you don't find the time. Mm -hmm. And like you say also the girl. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you feel bad if you do a, something for yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's really hard to learn, but I start learning. I, at least I take five minutes every day there you go. for myself. There you go. It's little, but may a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Marisol. That's a good point. You know, it. sometimes we think we have to start like, oh, I have to be able to take a whole day. That might not be feasible. And, you know, and we understand that. So start with five minutes. If you can't do five, how about two minutes? But the other thing too, is to think about how, how can I do, I can do what I need while I'm still caregiving, while I'm still with my love, if I can't get those five minutes. You know, sometimes in our house, it, we, it became kind of part of the language we have here. It's like, you know, mom needs quiet time. And so I'm giving myself quiet time. Everybody can get a book and color, can just even sit on the floor here with me, but I just need quiet. And, and that's something, yeah, yes, we took us a time to know, we have to work through that. And it might just be two minutes, it actually is quiet, but it's two minutes that I, I, you know, we all benefited from. And even when like, for example, using different apps with um, meditation, for example, I just put it out loud and everybody gets to listen to it, whether they were wanting it or not. 
But guess what? As a result, it helps all of us calm down. You know, there's things that you can still do that's kind of for you, like, you know, whether it's your favorite song that can be playing in the background while you're doing the medication, right? Or when you're driving to the doctor. Um, I, I know when we had to do outpatient therapy, I'll bring a book for me. I'll bring, you know, listen to podcasts or listen to, there's a place like Coursera, for example, you can do take some course or something free or just you know, little things that I was doing to just continue to grow, you know, as a person and grow in, you know, things that I was passionate about while I was still doing all the things I need to do for caregiving. And yes, we can't do it all, all the time. So allow yourself to, if you're tired, you're tired, you know, respect that. And that that moment, take care of yourself. You're saying, I'm tired, I'm going to rest. What I'm doing for myself right now is rest. You know, and that's fine too. But yeah, starting small and then building from there. You know, what's that saying? How do we, um, how do we eat an elephant? I think it is right. It's one, you one bite at a time. So yeah, you start small, just little by little, little by little, and you'll find the five minutes one day will turn into ten minutes, and then ten becomes fifteen, and then before you know it, you know everybody's doing the things that you wanted to do for you. And like I love to write for example, and my kids you know that they have a lot of energy. Sometimes I'll take them to the park so they can run their energy out as much as they can. And if I can you know, see where I can see them, sometimes I just sit on the ground there where they're playing with dirt or whatever, and I'll sit there and write and pull, pull, my, pull a journal. So I'm doing something for me, but I'm still there with them. Uh, we love the going to the creek. My kids love the water. And so if I, you know, the older sister actually, you know, is better supervising in the water than I am <laughs> and so like if they're all sitting right where I can see them like the older sister you know she's I can't believe it she's going to be 17 in four three months here um then sometimes I'll sit on the grass close enough that I'm right there you no know, but I can be listening to my own music I love nature I love the you know, sunset for example so I'll plan that we go to the, in the summer especially go to the creek towards the end of the day so that I can catch my sunset over the water you see, it's something that I'm doing for them, but I'm finding what, how can this also fill my cup? You know, so it's you know, different ways of looking at it. So sometimes it takes a lot of creativity, but you know, those are the little ways that we can start tweaking here and there. And because again, time and energy are limited you know, for all of us. Uh, anyone else before we move forward? Does that give you a few more options there, friend? Does that give you a few more? tips, maybe things that you can explore as well for yourself. Oh, get back to the chat. All right, thank you guys. I saw the, I, the yes earlier for, I guess, for the previous question. Thank you. All right, for the sake of time, because this section would be a little more meaty, um, I will you know, feel free to use the chat and I'll come back and read it in a bit. But then look at some goals. So we often set goals for a loved one, right? And it's whether it's a, you know, because the service coordinator came and we have to set up, you know, the plan for a loved one. We starting from early invention, we start with those plans, right? There's always a plan for services. So we got used to thinking about, you know, what a loved one needs and, you know, how to articulate it, how to put it on paper. But often we don't have no goals for ourselves. And then that's, again, one way that we take the back burner. So I'm going to share some tools here. Some of them will look, you know, familiar and some of them might be new but again i'll have all the links for you to um, access them later so this one is you no know, it can be a little touchy again feel free to only there's no requirements here if you want to participate you can if you don't we still love you the same but i want you to think about how satisfied are you with your life right now because again this can fluctuate you know i can be feel like oh at 2 p.m at 2 p.m i was very satisfied with my life yesterday and then at 5 p.m like what in the world is going on right and that's okay too so we're just going to kind of for this moment here right now um how satisfied are you and i ask this again it's now you know this is a no judgment it's a judgment free zone this is for you to just reflect and it actually leads into the next tool that we go the first tool we're going to look at and you're going to see why you know it's kind of good to start with this question in mind before you start looking at tools um, for goal setting or any tool for that matter. Yeah, thank you guys for sharing. So yeah, it's easy to get in the rut, A, um, between A and B, but sometimes D, yeah, I totally get it, totally get it. And sometimes it's, you know, we'll look at this next tool here. This is a very generic question and you'll find that our lives are made of different, yes, we're holistic people, meaning like, you know, all the parts of your life make your life. So like you can't always isolate them. But when you're looking at satisfaction, 
often it's not the same for every area, right? I can feel like mm, right now, you know, my career is, I can, you know, say my career right now is doing pretty well, right? I'm satisfied with that portion of my life. My health, not so much. And that's, the, that's my current reality. I have a lot of health issues going on right now. Um, and so there's different, you know, different ways of looking at like satisfaction. And a good tool for that is called the wheel, wheel of life. And the link is there, you know, you'll get the PowerPoint. And actually on that link that you get, you can be able to do it online. And it just asks you specific questions about different areas of life. And then you get to pick. And you can actually create your own. Pretty much, you know, which category you, what you want to assess at what time. And then this helps you then determine what part of your life you want to work on next. Because again, we can't do it all at once. Maybe we've got to start small. So in some seasons of life, one thing might have priority. Um, thank you, Anisha. I see your response there. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you're here with us and we're all learning together. And so sometimes you have to prioritize one area and then the other one take a little back burner, right? So for me right now, health is my highest priority, priority because that's the area where I'm struggling the most. So I'm spending more time, more energy, more resources, right, <laughs> into that 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 focus, that you know, that area. Kind of focusing on that. So with the wheel, of, the wheel of life, you get to assess your life in different areas and kind of grade it if you want, rate, rate it from one to ten. Ten is like this is as perfect as it can be. This is the best it could ever be, and then one is like, oh, this is really not what I want at all. And so you kind of look at each area. You guys, so you can even just get a paper and say, okay which area of my life do I want to assess right now? And you write it down. And then for each one of them, you give it a score. And then you can decide, we'll look at other tools, we'll help you this, you know, kind of work for, okay, what can I do to improve that number? So right now I might grade my health, maybe like at a four, you know, I'm up and breathing, but just you know, walking to the bathroom is a challenge for me right now, you know, between mobility and my heart issues is like, so I wanted at least to get to a five or six, you know, hopefully soon that I can, be, you know, do a little more than just feel like I'm stuck on <laughs> stuck in bed or stuck on a chair, right? So you, it might be something that you can really focus on one area and set maybe that one specific goal. And then you look at, you know, what can I do then to you know to meet that goal? Has anyone ever seen this tool before? Or is this new? And if it's new to you, does this resonate? Is this something you feel like you can use? Put the chat here. Thank you. Thank you. See your responses there. Yeah, so it's new and looks very helpful. And you can assess at different times. So if you work on one goal and you feel like I worked on this for a while, let me go, you know, sometimes like for me, I do this maybe three or four times a year. You know, but because it's easier for me to remember, like, you know, with each season, for example, you know, it's easy to kind of re revisit this. And it keeps me alive, to be honest with you, you know, and it keeps my life more lively because I'm like, oh, I want to work on this. You know, maybe last quarter, I was like more like finances. I needed, you know, was a challenge because again, caregiving costs money, right? And so then, you know, I needed to work on a few things. There are change things here. You know, I canceled some subscription that we weren't using as much. So I need to make some adjustment. And then this you know, quarter, I'm like, okay, health is my biggest concern. But these are the things I'm doing for me because when I do this, right? Again, it helps me feel you know, more joyful, but more satisfied by my life and who I am so that I am joyfully pouring into my loved ones. All right, let's look at the second tool here. This one might be look might look more familiar, right? This the integrated support staff, the support star. And here at Vision again, you probably heard some of you are familiar with the OPA family network, uh, where the advisor will actually help you look at these lab course tools. And I'll have I actually also have the um them under our resources. So you can reach out to, you know, click on the link. It takes you to a website, tell us more about the PFME network for, uh, and then how we can support you in looking at these tools. So often caregivers come and do this for themselves, you no, know, for the care, for the loved one, sorry. And now I'm encouraging you to look at this in a different, you know, different side of it. How can you be using the exact same tool for you? So with the wheel, wheel of life that we did, so think, for example, with me, I was saying my health is my priority right now. I can look at the health and kind of put, that's what I'm going to focus on here with the integrated star. And we'll look, okay, what do I already have going on as support that helps me to work on my health, that helps me improve my health? So on the personal strength and assets, like I'm motivated to get better. 
I want to be well, you know, just that determination and persistence that I have, that's, a, that's something that I'm bringing to the table, right? On the relationships, you know, I have friends and families who've been helping, you know, dropping meals and so, you know, watching the kids when I have appointments, for example, sometimes they're driving me to appointments when I'm not well enough to drive. So that's something that's helping me, you know, improve that, you know, work on that health goal, per se. Um, things that, you know, I'm eligible for, like, you know, because I have medical insurance that covers my visits to the doctor, that covers all the tests that I have to do and so forth. That's something that I qualify for. And then community-based access to the doctors in the community. And sometimes, like for myself, like I mentioned, like, I don't want to be feel like I'm stuck, right? So I like being outside. Sometimes it's going to the park next, you know, little park, maybe, you know, block and a half away here. Is something that's you know available in my community that helps me stay well. Because then when I'm able to, I can walk around the park a little bit, and that helps me improve my health. Right? Um, technology. I just yesterday had a visit with my doctor on my phone because now you know we can be we have access to things like that. But also on my phone, I can access my health records. You know, I can now there's even apps I can you can try to take you take your blood pressure on your phone. So technology is there to help me. So if the integrated start, you know, it's one way to look at it. It's like, okay, if I'm working on this one goal, what do I already have in place to help me meet that goal? But it can also work in the reverse where it's like, okay, this is what I already have. Sometimes I do this and I'll just cross a line in the middle of each section. Like on top, I'll put the things I already have going on in that section. And then at the bottom, I'll put the things that I need in that section. So remember I said my personal strength, you know, I'm determined to get well, I'm persistent. But I also have days where I get discouraged. I also have days where I, you know, just need motivation to, you know, to do one extra thing, you know, that we want, make one more phone call, right? And so I, you can do it that way where you're, you know, capturing things that you have right now. And so you remind, remember, remind yourself to utilize those things as you're pursuing that goal. But also you look, okay, what's missing? Does that help? Any questions about that? Yeah, Jesus said that tool was new to her. Yeah, thanks for sharing. So Karen says, I guess the items on this page are familiar, but the star and the grouping is different. And it's cool to apply it to ourselves as well to our loved ones we're caring for. Exactly. Exactly. Many people have seen, you know, those life course tools before, but we all been using and many of us have been using it just for our loved ones. And we forget we can use it for ourselves as well. All right, feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions or keep dropping comments in the chat. Appreciate that. Um, here's another tool, the trajectory. Again, the Fear Family Network, you know, does trainings uh, every month, multiple trainings around the life course tools and how to plan. And so that's another way to get more fam uh, familiar with those tools. I'd say the link, the link will be in you know, the last page of resources. But here's another one, the trajectory is another tool that we use for a loved one. It actually helps us, it's a little blurry because I tried to, uh, it was an image that I tried to expand and that did not go too well. But in the uh, up, uh, upper quadrant here, it says my, my vision for a good life. That's so kind of the things that you want, like where are you aiming? So you, this can be your life in general when you think about you know, how satisfied you are or not. Or it can be maybe one area if you look at the wheel of life and kind of pick it, pick one area that you're working on. So my vision right now for you know a good life for me when I'm focusing on my health is to be able to have more mobility, to be able to you know walk around and not have cardiac symptoms. You know, so that that's one thing that that's my vision. That's what I'm aiming for. What I don't want, which goes in the bottom here in the red section, um, is you know being stuck, feel like I'm stuck at home. You know, feeling so limited, right? And then your arrow, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but the arrows here, like the one on top will be, what are the things that I can do, right? The action steps that I can do that leads me to that good vision. What things must I experience? What things do I need? So if you did use your integrated star, you can pull some things from there. So for me, it's doctors, it's you know, my friends and family, it's my technology that can help me to know to get there. But it's also me taking some actions to improving some things that I, that I have control over. And the dotted line at the bottom of things that I don't want feel things that will lead me to what I don't want, right? It's not having doctors who don't listen to me. <laughs> it's not going to help me. So same thing if you're doing this for career, for example, my vision, maybe your vision for a career is trying to find a part-time job. And, and that right now, it might be a challenge with, you know, scheduling with uh, things going on at home, for example. But maybe something to work on that could go on top of your trajectory is 
looking for ways to volunteer. By the way, we have volunteer opportunities, right? <laughs> but and there's many plenty in the community, but you know, we're even virtually as well. But my point is like that allows you, even it's just as a few hours here, there are a few hours a month, but that allows you to do something else you're passionate about, passionate for, that leads you to the good vision that you're aiming for. So you might not even, you're not there yet per se, but you're doing things, little action steps, you know, that will help you get there. But maybe if you if it's a career, you could well maybe I can take a class or two, or maybe I can just start you watching some YouTube you know, videos about what it is that I'm interested in doing. So I'll learn more about it. So it, so it can be as small or as big as you want it to be. There's the sky's the limit here. This allows you to dream. And again, you know, these are tools that the PFM now has trainings. The link will be there. You can click and you know and attend, uh, attend any of the trainings there. Yes, Karen says, would you recommend that we share these ideas with others when we find ourselves in a situation, if friends telling us what a difficult time they're having in their caregiving situations? Usually I just listen um, and understandably, but maybe these tools could be more helpful to them. Yeah, listening is good. It's not a bad thing, but also, yeah, when you know a good tool that can help, to please, please share, share them, you know, refer them to any of the projects we have here. You know, whether it's like I said, the system navigation, the trauma informed care, the um, PA family network, and you know other things we have going on here at Vision. Because it's almost, here's how I look at it: if I have a friend who tells me they're having car trouble and they got stuck on the highway, I will listen and feel like you know, oh my goodness, I'm sorry you're going through that. But then I also say, you know what? I know there's a tow truck over here. I have a AAA car, right? Let let let's see how we can what we can do. So it's things like that. So you can listen and you should be listening because sometimes when a lot going on, we just need people ourselves included, just need to play a safe place to process, right? So that's where listening comes into play. But then there's many of those things, then action needs to be taken. So if you know, you know, a good resource, please share. You know, you know a good mechanic, you want to share that. You know, a good hairdresser, send them my way, right? <laughs> so definitely, you know, be sharing all the and when you get the PowerPoint, you're welcome to share them to uh forward the email. Actually, in the email, you will get a recording of the training and, and the, also the PDF attached to it. So no matter how you pursue, you choose to pursue these goals or what goals you set, you want to set for yourself. I wanted to just put this as kind of the last tool here to remind all of us to make our goals smart. And you, maybe you've seen this, people use it a lot, a lot in business and organizations, but again, we can use it for ourselves. You know, S stands for specific, M is measurable, a is attainable, R is relevant, T is time bound. And it kind of gives you tips here on which each area I'm supposed to be. But the way I look at it is if I'm gonna set a goal, it needs to be specific enough that when I meet it, I know that I met that goal. You know, often when, you know, back to the health, for example, people say, I wanna lose weight, that's everybody's New Year's resolution, right? But what does that look like actually? When would you know that you, you are losing weight? You said, I mean, set me something very specific, you know, and whether, whether it's, you know, adding how many pounds it is, you know, per se, and maybe it's not even that, like if you move, even with work, for example, if you're looking for employment, like I'm gonna work on, maybe just upping my resume or maybe looking for uh, volunteer opportunities. See, it's very specific now. Right, so then you know that when you reach it, you can, you can easily say, yes, I've reached that goal because you can refer to it and be able to you know, art, you know, quickly articulate that it was done or not. If you have to wonder, well, I'm not sure what it was look, supposed to, that looks like, that means it needs some tweaking. And that's okay, you know, it's a growth uh, process for all of us. But also making it measurable, right? So you, a way to be able to measure that, you know, if I'm going to do, back to the career example, if I wanted to do, um, I'm going to look for volunteer opportunities. Maybe I'll say for a week, I'll just give my, you know, make it like maybe two is my goal. I want to just look at, look at two organizations for a week that I might want to volunteer at. And maybe I'll just, you know, I can look at two. I want to find two, but I'm only going to be reaching out to one because that's all I want to commit to right now or maybe all that I can commit to. And if I do more, great. If I have more time and it's a caregiving week where things are a little more mellow, you know, I have a bit more time to, invest in, in my own goals, then maybe I can do three or four, right? But if you set a goal, make it measurable so you can track your progress as well. And it's back to being able to see if you, that you, you accomplish it or not. Um, attainable, like yes, the sky's the limit, but also making sure that you're you know, being realistic of what's going on, right? If I know it's a day that we're gonna have two, two or three appointments, it's not the day that I'm also gonna plan to call three or four 
you know, companies to, you know, maybe look for volunteer opportunities. You see what I mean? So be honest with yourself, but also give yourself some grace. Make it relevant in a way that it aligns. Often when I look at, you know, things being relevant, I want, I look at goals that help me amplify the rest of my life. If it's something that just like, out there that's not connected to anything else that I'm doing, anything else that's, that's important to me, most likely I will not have the energy or the motivation even to pursue it. But if something that's very relevant, you know, whether, you know, for many of us, even here on the call, you know, we work in the jobs that we work on because it relates to what we you know, who we are as caregivers, and that's so important to us, right? So that makes it very relevant. Then I'm even more excited you know, I love my job because I get to do something that's important and meaningful to me. So that's how maybe how, that's a simple way to look at how relevant, you know, it is the goals that you're pursuing. And then, then back to that time bound, right? If I'm going to call, like we talked about measuring, like, you know, making three calls or looking at two agency in that week, that's kind you're setting that time. And again, things will happen. So give yourself some grace. But this is a good and simple way for you to start looking at goals differently. What are you setting up for yourself, even for your loved one? Sometimes, you know, I look at IEPs for my own children. I'm like, who wrote those goals? You know, it's like, was that in that meeting when it happened? Why do we have to revisit this? So keeping this in mind for every area of life, for yourself, for your loved one, is a good way to actually, you know, be setting goals that are um, the more in a more effective way. Any questions about this? Is this a new tool or is this something that you feel that you can use? Make sure I'm keeping tra track of time here. Okay, we'll be done here in about 10 minutes or so. Be mindful of that. All righty. I'll go to the next section here about how to maintain our individuality while we're caregiving. Because it's so easy to lose ourselves, right? Many of us, when we join this, these ranks of caregiving, right? It's like not only will, throw back, will we take the back burner, but also we lose even who we are. I've had moments where, you know, I, I could remember even what color I like, you know, what food I actually like to eat because honestly, I had to cook a meal for, you know, picky eaters in my house and that's all we needed. You ate it so many times that you forgot what meals I wanted to eat myself. Yeah. Thank you, Anisha. I see, yeah, I'm glad this helps. So. This, these are some tips to just to remind all of us that, you know, we matter, that we are important to this whole, you know, caregiving journey. Our loved ones need us. So we need to be, again, putting to, into ourselves as much as we can so that we can be there for them. And starting by, you know, maintaining our individuality is very important. Yes, I'm a caregiver, but I'm also number one in a way. And I want you to lose sometimes like, I don't have time to do all of this. And, but there is, if you keep reminding yourself that you are important and that you also deserve care, it helps, you know, it, it, you become more intentional about that self-care. And like self-care looks different for everybody, right? It's not always you no know, pampering. Sometimes self-care is just having that five minute by yourself in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, I've been there, right? So what it is that you need that day, you know, want you to be first and, you know, intentional by identifying those needs. Like, what do I need? And then how can I, you know, achieve that? How can I have those needs met? And maybe you need to look at, you know, the, the uh, integrated support star again and look at, okay, I have these needs. How can I use, you know, the different quadrants already there to help me meet that need? Sometimes it needs for rest. Maybe sometimes it needs to vent. And again, come to the support group. Um, but then you be creative. You need to find what works for you because there's no one size fit all. You know, what works for me, even for myself, what worked for me yesterday might not work today. And, you know, and keeping myself, you no, know, maintaining my individuality. So be creative and think outside the box. And yes, we can all learn from others, but no one is like you. Just like there's no snowflakes alike, right? So it's okay to do things differently because that's what works for you and your family. Another way to just finding some hobbies and things to explore. You know, what are things that you used to do before that you are, you, you, you have lost touch? And so maybe, you know, I was talking about crocheting earlier. I'm not good at it, but that's something that I still learning to do 11 years ago. And I'm still not good at it because I can't tell you the last time I actually pick up, you know, yarn and, you know, to do that. It's been years, right? And so maybe you want to explore something new. 
give yourself permission to do that. And some of those things you can even do with your family, make it a family affair if you want, where yes, you're there with them, you're caring for them, but you're also, again, pouring into your own cup at the same time. And be intentional about your personal growth. We are so focused as caregivers and good and rightfully so in, meaning, in making sure that our loved ones are progressing or growing, the meeting goals, right? That we're, you know, all those IEPs and all those, you know, um, individual support plan that we're creating that, you know, we're meeting those goals that they have all the resources. But how much are you also investing in your own personal growth? You know, back to that way of life, right? Still looking at those areas maybe that you need to invest a little bit more time. Even if it's just, you know, listening to your favorite song, maybe it's listening to podcasts while you're cooking or take care of a loved one so that you're also doing something for yourself. But I find that accountability is key because I can have all the brilliant ideas, right? And then when nobody knows about it, guess what? Half of them might not even happen. <laughs> but if I can share with someone else, then I'm like, oh, I told him I was going to do this. Now I really have to do that. You know, so find an accountability partner, whether it's a friend, a mentor, a family member, even like my kids with the park. And I mentioned walking around the park is something that I enjoy doing and want to do. But those days that I don't feel like doing it. And but if my accountability partners become my loved one, when I say we're going to go to the park. They might not know how to tell time, but you said park. <laughs> it's like that's all they're going to remember. So throughout the day, they're going to make sure they remind me park. Where are we going? Park. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> you know, but that became part of my accountability system. So it, you know, this doesn't have to be someone far. It could be, again, our loved ones are so gifted and talented in so many ways. And sometimes we just need to give them more opportunities even to support us in simple ways like that. So that's one way that my kids support me. So just something to think about. And maybe, you know, it's, you know, finding a friend to do things with, you know, whether it's just, you know, checking on the phone, like, oh, we're going to, I'm going to listen to this audio book. You know, I will tell you about it, you know, in two days or in a week. And they're like, oh yeah, I did tell, you know, Karen, that I'm going to get back to her and tell about this book. So now, you know, I'm going to have to let this book play in the background while, you know, I'm folding laundry, you know, something like that. All right. Okay, I was saying about how she has a friend. Good, good. We all need that. We all need that support. All right. So question for you, just keeping time here. We're almost done. Is there anything on this list that you feel like, okay, when I leave here, that's one thing I want to try and to do differently? you're free to share but if you also don't want to share that's fine but I want you to just kind of look at it and you know make a mental note per se make a commitment to yourself yeah being intentional yeah I think that's how it, where it starts for sure that's where it starts yeah that actually gave me the idea I might probably move being intentional to number one because <laughs> I, I think, think if you're not intentional nothing gets done oh go ahead I think I want to be more crappy <laughs> yes yeah Kind of thinking outside the box. And if you need suggestions, you know where to find me. You know, and those are things again, like I said, we talk about in the support group, you know, just creative ways to take care of ourselves when we're taking care of others. Awesome. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. All right. So we'll get to the resource section here and then I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. So I mentioned um, the caregiver guilt training that we did. So that's the second resource, but there's also a training we did in the summer, I can't remember if it was July or August maybe, uh, on time management. And it's time management tips for caregivers. So once you get one, you get the, the PowerPoint here, you just click on that link, it takes you to the recording of the training. And it'll give you more tips on how you can start finding pockets of time. Now, sometimes two minutes, but now it's two minutes for you that you did not have before. Um, so that's the time management uh, tips. And then the one for caregiving, uh, caregiver guilt, sorry. And then these are the Philadelphia support projects or the two projects that I mentioned that, you know, oversee the system navigation and the trauma-informed care. And I talked a lot about the PA Family Network and there's also the link for that. Thank you all for coming. I'm gonna hang here if you have any questions. Uh, I know we have like one minute left for, you know, people need to go, that's fine. I have time, I'm gonna be here. If you have any questions, feel free to, you know, um, to unmute or share in the chat. Then I am going to, oops, I want to stop recording. That way, if you have something more private and it's not shared out per se.